Hey y'all, let's take a look at multiplying, dividing, slightly cooked numbers. Oh wait, no, that's not singed, it's signed. Never mind. Man, I had my whole lesson planned out. Oh well, I'll think of something else anyway. Um, let's talk about multiplication. What actually five times seven means. Now, if you were the, let's say the big brother of some radio, I mean some um, beautiful little kid that you were, let's say a, a sister or a brother or something like that. I mean, how would you explain you know, five times seven to some kid who didn't know what it was. You probably go, you know, that means there are seven five times. You know, seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. That, that just saves us time having to write it five times. Or you could say, you know, it was five seven times. Five, 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 five. five. That's what it means. Okay, so let's keep that in mind when we do this, all right? So, in other words, let's look at this setup here. We all know the answer to this, okay? Three times two is six. Three times one is three. Three times zero is zero. Okay, now you can look and see the pattern that's happening each time, right? If you're going, if I'm going two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, I'm going right down the list like this, okay? Two, one, zero, it's just going to the left on the number line one at a time, right? But you can see what's happening here too as well. Each time the answer is going down by three. Six goes to three, three goes to zero, zero goes to, now logically, you'd have to say, well, the answer has to be negative three. And then three to the left of negative three is negative six. Three to the net left of negative uh, six is negative nine. So let's, for 30 seconds, let's look at this. We know what this means. That means there are three twos. This means there are three ones or there are one threes, whatever. This, even this makes sense, right? Well, first this one, that means there are no threes, so you get nothing. But even this one, three times negative one, that means that there's, there's a negative one, and then there's another negative one, and then there's another negative one. If you were to add those all together, what's negative one minus one minus one? That'd be negative three. Or if you want to say, what's negative one plus negative one plus negative one? Negative three is the answer. Same thing here, all right? This is all logically makes sense. Now here's where it gets kind of funky. Now look at this. Let's do this one first. We'll start here. Okay, three times negative three. Well, that means there are three negative threes, right? In other words, this is what this logically means, right? Negative three, negative three, negative three, all those together will give you negative nine, right? Okay, if there are just two times negative three, that means there are just two of them like this. Like there's a negative three and there's a negative three. Negative three minus three is negative six, okay? If there is just one of them, of course, that's negative three. If there's none of them, that's a zero, of course. Now here's where it gets weird, all right? First off, you tell me, each time on this uh, column, we're going down one. Three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, right? What's the answer? What's happening to the answer each time? And don't say it's going down, because it's not. Negative nine, on a number line, can you visualize it? The next one here, it's going up three. It's going up three, it's going up three. So logically, what does the next answer have to be? Three, right? And this answer has to be six. But the weird thing is, like, you can make sense of this. Like three times negative two, you could go, oh yeah, well that's just three negative twos, and that's gonna give you a negative six, right? This one here, how do you explain that to a little kid? Like, how many negative threes do I have? Oh, well, I have negative one of them. How do you have negative one of anything? You know? And like this one, how do you have, you know, like if you can say, you know, how many apples do you have? Eight apples. Or how many negative threes do you have? I have eight negative threes. Oh, that will give you negative 24 total. But how do you say, I have negative two negative threes? It's kind of weird, doesn't make sense, anyway. So you can see kind of a pattern. We have to be logical about it. it. There is a pattern here, okay? And let me just show you what the actual rules are, okay? You can write these down if you want to. If you think you can remember them, you go right ahead. But the first rule is if you have two numbers with the same sign, both negatives or both positives, the product, don't forget, that's the answer to a multiplication problem, or the quotient, that's the answer to a division problem, is positive. So they both have the same uh, signs, if you multiply or divide them, the answer is positive, okay? So the second rule is, you probably figured out, if the two numbers have the opposite sign, whether you're multiplying or whether you're dividing, the answer is negative, and that's it. So if you want to pause this for a second and think about it, and look back at this page here, look at that. I'm multiplying two numbers with the same sign, the answer is positive. If I'm multiplying two numbers with different signs, that's a positive, that's a negative, the answer is negative. 
Uh, we haven't done dividing yet, but we will in a second. Okay, well, let's take a look at them. All right, so let's simplify these. We all know four times two is eight, right? Just that they're both the same signs, so the answer is positive. Look at this one. This is two, two uh, multiplication or two factors, and they're both the same sign as well. Now, you know, how do you explain this to a little kid? How many negative twos do I have, big brother? You have negative four. I mean, what does that mean? You know, it's kind of strange, but the answer is eight since they're both the same sign. Negative four times positive two is going to be negative eight. They're different signs. Four times negative two, they're different signs. So negative eight. There you go. That's the answer. Okay. Now look at this. This, this is all division. Don't forget, every fraction is a division problem. Okay. So eight divided by two, same sign, four, positive. Negative eight, negative two, same sign, positive. By the way, this does make logical sense. How many negative twos can you fit into negative eight? Well, four of them, right? Here's a negative two, here's a negative two, here's a negative two, and here's a negative two. How many negative twos? Four. That makes negative eight, makes sense. Now this, same thing. What's negative eight divided in, in, into, psh, divided into two, or excuse me, divided by two, chop it in half, the answer is negative four, right? They're different signs, so the answer is negative. This one, whew, good luck making logical sense of, 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 you know, of that here. How many negative twos fit into positive eight? Ah, okay, well the answer is negative four because they're different signs. There you go, okay. All right, let's take a look at the third rule. You don't have to write this down, but if you can remember it, whatever. Okay, an even number of negative factors gives you a positive product, an even number. An odd number, gives you a negative product, okay? And I'll show you why. You can pause it if you want to, but this is why. Because look at this. Remember, if we have two numbers and you're multiplying them and they're the same sign, that gives you a positive, right? In other words, this is going to give you a positive answer. But if you multiply a positive by a negative, they're opposite signs. This part times this part is going to give you a negative answer, okay? Now we've done all three of those but then you still have another positive, right? So this part times this part, that's what we have. The answer is gonna be negative to this. So that's an odd number of negative signs. There's one, two, and three. Three is an odd number, boom. In other words, what's happening is, uh, if it's, you know, if there's a bunch of negative factors, you just kind of pair them up. Any pair does, it gives you a positive number. If there's one left over, that means the answer is gonna be negative. Don't even care about what the answer is, okay? Well, you tell me, what's the answer to this? First off, is it gonna be positive or negative? going to be positive, right? These two multiplied together will give you a positive. So 6 times 1 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 1. The answer is positive 12. All right? How about this one? Don't even forget what the answer is. Is, is the product going to be positive or negative? Pa pause it for a sec. Okay. Well, look, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. In other words, these two cancel each other out. These two cancel each other out. And these two cancel each other out. So the answer is going to be positive, okay? All right, don't even care what the answer is, okay? All right, pause it, go to page 256, try all those practice problems, and we'll come together and look at them, okay? All right. Okay, well, let's take a look together here. And A is going to be negative 12. B will be also negative 12. C will be positive 12. D will be 12. E will be just 2. F will be two as well. How many negative sevens go into negative 14? Two of them, they're both the same sign, okay? Uh, G will be negative two and H will be negative two, okay? Now, uh, I, we have two negatives, three negatives, so the answer will be negative. So two times three is six, times one is six, plus uh, 24, 48. So negative 48 will be the answer on that one, okay? J, good grief, how many questions do they have here? Okay, so let's see how, how many, one, two, three, four negative factors, so the answer will be positive. So three times two is six, six, 12, uh, 24, and then 72. So there we go. Is this on K positive or negative? I got one, two, three, four, and then five. That is an odd number. The two pairs will cancel each other out, but you'll also have a last one, five, so the answer will be negative. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a good day.